All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we're gonna do an example problem that involves some basic mechanical properties and a strain information for this beam that's supported by a steel rod and a pin support. That rod is made of A36 steel, with which has a modulus of elasticity of 200 gigapascals and a yield strength of 250 megapascals. And what we're gonna do in this problem is determine the maximum distributed load that we can apply without causing the steel rod to yield or just before the steel rod yields. And then we'll also determine the vertical displacement of a point on the beam just before the rod yields as well. So here is what the structure looks like. So here's my structure. The, this is a rigid beam. I'll call this point A, point B, point C over here where this pin support is. And member AC, we'll call that a rigid beam. So there's no bending or anything happening in there. And the diameter of this rod right here, this rod has a diameter of 10 millimeters. And you can probably tell from the dimensions here, I made this nice and convenient. This is a three, four, five triangle. Make our calculations a little bit easier. And here's what I have. And I'm trying to find the maximum load W that I can apply on here without this rod yielding. You know, this is another way to apply the basic design relationship. A lot of times in design, we're trying to figure out the area. This time, we're trying to, we're gonna use that basic design relationship and determine this maximum distributed load. So here's what the basic design relationship looks like. And in particular, because I'm so interested in the Rod, the rod, the failure mode that I'm using for this basic design relationship, I'm considering the failure mode of this rod yielding. And here, this rod will yield due to normal stress. So I'm gonna look at this limit state or the failure mode of the rod yielding, and it's gonna be sigma, the stress that's applied in the rod is less than or equal to whatever I'm allowing. And in this case, again, there's no safety factor mentioned. So we're gonna look at the case where this rod yields. So that means my allowable stress is going to be the yield stress of the steel and the applied normal stress here in the rod, it's gonna be due to the internal normal force. So that's just gonna be whatever normal force is in rod AB divided by the area of AB. And now what I have is I have this relationship here and looking at my given, I know the yield strength of A36 steel already. I know the cross-sectional area because I know the diameter of the rod. So really what I'm left with is trying to figure out what the internal normal force is. And hopefully there's a way for us to relate the internal normal force of this rod to the distributed load W. And if I can do that, then hey, I can solve for W and get a maximum allowed distributed load for this thing, for this structure. The things that we do to relate the internal normal or internal loading to the external loading is use equilibrium equations. And so I can do this, I'm gonna take a cut. I'm gonna cut right here and I'm gonna draw a free body diagram of this structure. So here's my geometry with the cut and I have a normal force here. I'm gonna assume tension. So I'm gonna draw a normal force away from the cut here. There are no other forces because I have a pin and a pin connection. This is like a truss element. And here at the pin support, I have a vertical and a horizontal reaction, which I will call CX and CY. And so for me to relate the normal force here to this distributed load W, I can apply all my equilibrium equations, but I know right away that if I take moments about C, I can get rid, I don't need to figure out CX and CY. They're gonna be eliminated from the equation and I'll have a relationship or an equation with my only variables being NAB and this distributed load W. So if I take moments about C, I'll have the resultant here. So that'll be W times two meters times the arm, which is one meter minus NAB, the vertical component here, which will be three fifths times the arm, which is two meters. And all that will equal zero. And this will be my, my one equilibrium equation that I need. And this tells me I can already see here that the two meters cancel out and this NAB is equal to 
five thirds meter times W. And I'm real big on keeping this units of meter in here. And a lot of times students will forget writing that meters in there and they'll end up with an answer that without the correct units and then there'll be conversion errors and, and all kinds of mistakes. So I, I really recommend making sure you keep the units and write it through. And here is my relationship for this NAB equal to five thirds meters times W. This is the relationship that relates my normal force to the distributed load. And now I'm just gonna plug and chug into my basic design relationship again. So here, so again, just taking my basic design relationship, which was this NAB over the area of AB is less than or equal to sigma Y. And if I plug some numbers into this, I will get this 5 thirds M times W over the area of this rod. And that area is just pi over four times the diameter of the rod, which is 10 millimeters squared less than or equal to my allowable stress, which for yielding was 250 megapascals. And it's also nice to know if you know this and if not, you should prove this to yourself. This is the same as 250 newtons per millimeter squared. In addition, I have this units of meter here, so I have to apply a conversion. So if I'm gonna do everything in newtons and millimeters, I'm gonna apply a conversion here. I'm gonna multiply this 1,000 millimeters over one meter. Boom, boom, done. And now I'm ready to solve. Boom, the meters cancel out. And when I work this out, let's see, this would be 100 power four. This W, the distributed load will be less than or equal to 11.78 newtons per millimeter. And if I want to convert this into newtons per meter, I would multiply this by 1,000 millimeters per meter, which would be equal to 11, 1,780 newtons per meter, which is the same as 11.78 kilonewtons per meter. So this 11.78 kilonewtons per meter is the maximum load, the maximum uniformly distributed load that I could apply to the structure just before or without causing the rod or just the instant where the rod will start to yield.